Section 1 of All About Coffee. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Rochelle Bereni. All About Coffee by William Ukers. Chapter 1. Dealing with the etymology of coffee. Origin and translation of the word from the Arabian into various languages. Views of many writers. The history of the word coffee involves several phonetic difficulties. The European languages got the name of the beverage about 1600 from the original Arabic kahua kahua, not directly, but through its Turkish form kave. This was the name not of the plant, but the beverage made from its infusion, being originally one of the names employed for wine in Arabic. Sir James Murray in the New English Dictionary says that some have conjectured that the word is a foreign, perhaps African word, disguised, and have thought it connected with the name Kaffa, a town in Shoa, southwest Abyssinia, reputed native place of the coffee plant. But that of this there is no evidence, and the name Kahua is not given to the berry or plant, which is called Bun Bun, the native name in Shoa being Bun. Contributing to a symposium on the etymology of the word coffee in Notes and Queries, 1909, James Platt Jr. said, The Turkish form might have been written kave, as its final H was never sounded at any time. Sir James Murray draws attention to the existence of two European types, one like the French café, Italian café, the other like the English coffee, Dutch coffee. He explains the vowel O in the second series as apparently representing AU, from Turkish av. This seems unsupported by evidence, and the V is already represented by the FF. So on Sir James' assumption, coffee must stand for kav, V, which is unlikely. The change from A to O, in my opinion, is better accounted for as an imperfect appreciation. The exact sound of A in Arabic and other Oriental languages is that of the English short U, as in kaf. This sound, so easy to us, is a great stumbling block to other nations. I judge that Dutch coffee and kindred forms are imperfect attempts at the notation of a vowel which the writers could not grasp. It is clear that the French type is more correct. The Germans have corrected their coffee, which they may have got from the Dutch, into kaffee. The Scandinavian languages have adopted the French form. Many must wonder how the HV of the original so persistently becomes FF in the European equivalents. Sir James Murray makes no attempt to solve this problem. Virendra Nath Chattopadhyay, who also contributed to the Notes and Query Symposium, argued that the HW of the Arabic kahwa becomes sometimes FF and sometimes only F or V in European translations because some languages, such as English, have strong syllabic accents, stresses, while others, as French, have none. Again, he points out that the third aspirate H is heard in some languages, but is hardly audible in others. Most Europeans tend to leave it out altogether. Colonel W. F. Prudeau, another contributor, argued that the European languages got one form of the word coffee directly from the Arabic kahwa and quoted from Hobson Jobson in support of this. Chawa in 1598, Kauhua in 1610, Kahu in 1615. While Sir Thomas Herbert, 1638, expressly states that they drink in Persia, above all the rest, koho or kofa, by Turk and Arab called Kafi and Kahua. Here, the Persian, Turkish, and Arabic pronunciations are clearly differentiated. Colonel Prudeau then calls, as a witness to the Anglo-Arabic pronunciation, one whose evidence was not available when the New England Dictionary and Hobson Jobson articles were written. This is John Jourdain, a Dorsetshire seaman whose diary was printed by the Hackliot Society in 1905. On May 28, 1609, he records that, in the afternoon, we departed out of Hatch, Al Huta, the capital of the Lahej district near Aden, and traveled until three in the morning, and then we rested in the plain fields until three the next day, near unto a Kaho Hos in the desert. On June 5th, the party, traveling from Hippa, Ib, lay in the mountains, our camels being weary, and ourselves little better. This mountain is called Nazmard, Nikhil Sumara, where all the Koho grows. Farther on was a little village where there is sold kohu and fruit. The seeds of the kohu is a great merchandise, for it is carried to Grand Cairo and all other places of Turkey and to the Indias. Prudeau, however, mentions that another sailor, William Revit, in his journal, 1609, says, referring to Mocha, that Shaumer Shadli, Shaikh Ali bin Omar Asharil, was the first inventor for drinking of coffee, and therefore had an estimation. 
This rather looks to Prideaux as if, on the coast of Arabia and in the mercantile towns, the Persian pronunciation was in vogue, whilst in the interior, where Jourdain travelled, the Englishman reproduced the Arabic. Mr. Chattopadhyaya, discussing Colonel Prideaux's views as expressed above, said, Colonel Prideaux may doubt if the worthy mariner, in entering the word in his log, was influenced by the abstruse principles of phonetics enunciated by me, but he will admit that the change from kava to coffee is a phonetic change and must be due to the operation of some phonetic principle. The average man, when he endeavors to write a foreign word in his own tongue, is handicapped considerably by his inherited and acquired phonetic capacity. And, in fact, if we take the quotations made in Hobson Jobson and classify the various forms of the word coffee according to the nationality of the writer, we obtain very interesting results. Let us take Englishmen and Dutchmen first. In Danvers Letters, 1611, we have both coho pots and kofao pots. Sir T. Rowe, 1615, and Terry, 1616, have kohu. Sir T. Herbert, 1638, has coho and kofa. Evelyn, 1637, coffee. Friar, 1673, coho. Ovington, 1690, coffee. And Valentine, 1726, coffee. And from the two examples given by Colonel Prideaux, we see that Jourdain, 1609, has coho, and Revit, 1609, has coffee. To the above should be added the following by English writers given in Foster's English factories in India, 1618 to 21, 1622 to 23, 1624 to 29. Kauha, 1619, Kauhe, Kauhua, 1621, Kofa, 1628. Let us now see what foreigners, chiefly French and Italian, write. The earliest European mention is by Rao Wolf, who knew it in Aleppo in 1573. He has the form Shaube. Prospera Alpini, 1580, has Kauva. Paludinus, 1598, Chaua. Piard de Laval, 1610, Kahoa. P. de Laval, 1615, Kahu. Jacques Botanis, 1631, Cavea, and the journal d'Antoine Galland, 1673, Cave. That is, Englishmen use forms of a certain distinct type, viz. Kohu, Koho, Kafau, Kofe, Kofa, Kofi, which differ from the more correct transliteration of foreigners. In 1610, the Portuguese Jew Pedro Teixeira, in the Hakliot Society's edition of his travels, used the word Cava. The inferences from these transitional forms seems to be 1. The word found its way into the languages of Europe both from the Turkish and from the Arabic. 2. The English forms, which have strong stress on the first syllable, have O instead of A and F instead of H. 3. The foreign forms are unstressed and have no H. The original V or W, or labialized U, is retained or changed into F. It may be stated accordingly that the chief reason for the existence of two distinct types of spelling is the omission of H in unstressed languages and the conversion of H into F under strong stress in stressed languages. Such conversion often takes place in Turkish. For example, Siladar in Persian, which is a highly stressed language, becomes Zilifdar in Turkish. In the languages of India, on the other hand, in spite of the fact that the aspirate is usually very clearly sounded, the word kava pronounced keva by the less educated classes, owing to the syllables being equally stressed. Now for the French viewpoint. Jardin opines that, as regards the etymology of the word coffee, scholars are not agreed, and perhaps never will be. Dufour says the word is derived from kahue, a name given by the Turks to the beverage prepared from the seed. Chevalet d'Arvieux. French consul at Alay Savare and Trevaux, in his dictionary, think that coffee comes from the Arabic, but from the word kahue or kahue, meaning to give vigor or strength, because, says Darvieux, its most general effect is to fortify and strengthen. Tavernier combats this opinion. Mosley attributes the origin of the word coffee to kaffa. Sylvester de Sacy, in his Shrestomathi Arabe, published in 1806, thinks that the word kahwa, synonymous with maklai, roasted in a stove, might very well be the etymology of the word coffee. D'Alembert in his encyclopedic dictionary writes the word café. Jardin concludes that whatever there may be in these various etymologies, it remains a fact that the word coffee comes from an Arabian word, whether it be kahua, kahue, kafa, or kahwa, and that the peoples who have adopted the drink have all modified the Arabian word to suit their pronunciation. This is shown by giving the word as written in various modern languages. French café, Breton café, German café, coffee tree café bon, Dutch coffee, coffee tree coffee bunen, Danish café, Finnish kavi, Hungarian kave, Bohemian kava, Polish kahwa, Romanian kafie, Croatian kafa, 
Servian cava, Russian coffee, Swedish cafe, Spanish cafe, Basque cafia, Italian cafe, Portuguese cafe, Latin scientific cafia, Turkish cahue, Greek cafeo, Arabic cahua, coffee berry bun, Persian kehve, coffee berry bun, Anamite cafe, Cambodian cafe, Dukni bun bound, Taluyan caprivitulu, Tamil capi kotai or kopi, Panarese capi bija, Chinese kiafe tautse, Japanese kehi, Malayan kawa kopi, Abyssinian bon, Fulak legal cafe, Susu huri kaf, Marquisan kapi chinook kaufi, Valapuk kaf, Esperanto kafa. End of section one. Read by Rochelle Bereni.